Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for a brand new series called Trail Trauma with Dr. Tomlinson. And today our guest is none other than the Dr. Tomlinson. Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here today. Uh, Thanks Dr. for the invite. Tomlinson. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, some things that happen on the trail, particularly trail traumas where uh, riders will have an accident on the trail. If you're into mountain biking, uh, a lot of people love to watch crash videos. But one thing that we've noticed is that uh, people a lot of times make a lot of medical mistakes on the trail when someone has an accident, particularly when there are concussions or broken bones or head injuries involved. Um, and, and as someone who's a, a new mountain biker yourself, um, you know, it, it's definitely something that I think people take too lightly. So what we're going to be doing is watching a couple of MTB crash videos. Um, the one we have today is a video where someone takes a pretty hard spill. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Tomlinson is going to be providing her insight into what they do right, what they do wrong, and, and things you need to consider when you have an accident or a trauma like this on the trail when mountain biking. So uh, we're going to jump right in, and Dr. Tomlinson is going to give her input as she sees fit. Great. Oh. Here we go. The guys are coming down the trail, and it is a pretty aggressive trail. And uh, as we're going to see here, one of the guys are going to have a pretty hard, hard slam. And these look like pretty experienced riders, so oh, they definitely know what they're doing yeah. bike-wise until they almost run into each other. <laughs> and then here's where the accident happens. Oh. Okay, oh, so like stop right here. So the big thing is, is we just watched the guy go... Not necessarily OTB, but he landed pretty hard. Looks like he might have hit his head, neck, shoulder, maybe his chest. So right away, his friend should be thinking that he might be having some sort of head trauma, like a concussion, maybe some broken bones, maybe a dislocated shoulder. There's a lot that could be going on with this guy right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Fuck. And as you can clearly see, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. the easiest thing to notice is that the guy's clearly unconscious. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. You're good. And then, Don, he's out. And the, he's out, he's the out. one thing they do that's really great this whole time, Sabu, first of all, he's not sleeping, um, is they good. do strap other bikes Sabu, from coming down the trail. That's definitely like a, Sabu, a great way to go. Breathe. Breathe. And then too, if you could pause this here, um, he's not, this isn't normal breathing that he's doing. Um, this is actually a sign of some pretty serious head trauma. Um, even though your friend might be passed out, if they're having this labored breathing, um, that could be a sign for some sort of lung problem. They could have fractured some ribs or they could have hit their head so hard that it's now interfering with how they breathe. Yeah, you can. He's out, dude. Yeah, he is Double. really hey, out. Can you, um, just and obviously, we're going to see kind of a, buddy. a cardinal yeah. sin that we see a lot of yeah, people do in mountain bike oh. accidents, which Friendly. is they move this guy, which is a definite no no. Like, oh, there you go. You could have just broken his back now. Um, <laughs> definitely don't take somebody by the head and lift them up. Um, all these what he's doing right like, now is definitely appropriate like, if your friend out, out? No, might out. not have spinal fractures, if he doesn't mm -hmm. have broken bones, definitely put them in this position. But in the setting where, A, you don't know if they might have a neck fracture, mm -hmm. don't lift them up by the head. Definitely not recommended. Um, and then kind of manipulating his legs, manipulating his arms. He could have had a dislocated pelvis or fractured pelvis, excuse me, or a dislocated shoulder. And they're just kind of manhandling him. They're really getting in there that they don't need to be that close to him. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of the first thing that I noticed was, you know, we see that the guy during the crash goes down on his right hand side. And I mean, he's laying here on the ground. And one of the first things they do is, is kind of manipulate his arm, take it from behind him and roll it, you know, over to his front side. And the kind of the first thing I thought was what if his collarbones broke or what if, you know, he has a broken mm -hmm. or dislocated shoulder and they're just kind of moving that thing around willy nilly. So that was kind of the first thing that I noticed for sure. Oh, exactly. He hasn't up yet. Hey bud. Wake him up. Hey bud. Holy shit. 
Zabo. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Okay, definitely in these cases, do not no. remove the helmet. Oh, yeah, my, my thing. Green yeah, that is one thing that they do. Uh, they, they don't remove the helmet, which is good. We do see that in a lot of the videos. Yeah. Come on, wake up. Mm. And then the fact that he's slipping in and out of consciousness, that's yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Call 911. Hard, you probably need a, a more experienced medical up, professional. How's your shoulders? Don't move your head. Don't move your head. Definitely don't let him stand up. Hey, what's up, man? Double. Yeah, well, we're going to see some, double. some double, interesting double, double, double. stuff here as the guy it, starts to come to um, that, I, that I think is pretty interesting as someone who doesn't have any What's medical experience. Mm. Zabo, how you feeling, bro? How you feeling? Yeah, and so the big concern You're here that, that makes me hey, think that he oh, had man. a pretty serious yeah. head trauma is that he's coming yeah, in and out of consciousness. And this could be a sign of concussion, but this could also be a sign of a brain bleed. Um, this kind of coming in and out, and then what we'll see in a little bit of a uh, while, yeah. we'll see we at? that we it's it's not probably a, a good Hell sign yeah. for what's happening. Yeah. How's your shoulder? Is it dislocated? You good? And here's the part that oh, amazes me the most. Hard, I mean, the guy has been unconscious feeling, for dude? several minutes. Oh, I'm fine. Are you sure? Now he says, oh. can you, can you do this? I'm fine. What, what happened? What's your you and look, he just snaps right out of it, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. As if nothing happened. He's clearly but, oh, so you're dizzy, dude. Sit you know, dizzy yeah. and on his feet. Yeah. I mean, you were snoring, bro. And this is dude, kind of what we see out, in the medical profession Holy where shit, somebody the says they got hit in the head, no and passed out, and then all of a sudden they're they're in a lucid interval. They're awake, they're alert, he's walking around. You know, let's quick check out the GoPro. Maybe not the best decision to do. Um, yeah. But you know, whatever. That's cool. And then too. here's the part that really uh, amazes me the most, and, and something I want to talk about here because um, we've seen this happen before with celebrities, where just recently this year we had someone who uh, had a head injury, you know, a concussion on a ski slope, and they continued down the slope afterwards. And what we see here is that the gentleman gets back on his bike on this trail well another August. good decision they make here is um someone's riding a yeti not sponsored but great <laughs> choice right there yeah good good choices of bikes and and what's interesting here is again they let this guy get back on the bike to finish the trail and i think the area of concern here is that what happens if he has another large spill right um and that seems like, you know, oh, well, we'll ride cautiously. Well, look how easy this guy just has, which seemingly is a small spill, but any kind of head injury after you've had a concussion, you know, right after another, literally not even minutes later. Um, I mean, you can explain the, the kind of repercussions something like that could have. This gentleman should not have gotten back on his bike and continued to ride down this trail. Yeah. And especially he could have had some sort of hairline fracture and then a second fall um could kind of worsen that fracture also if you have a concussion <laughs> you might feel okay and then realize that, that you know you have no sense of balance it's hard for you to coordinate movement so maybe riding down a bike down rough terrain isn't yeah. really the number one choice for us to be doing and you can see us especially right here i mean just how aggressive the rest of the trail is and i mean we're talking about a guy who could potentially have a back injury and not know it and then you know it's just hanging on by a thread and you know it takes one more slam or one more hard drop that's further down the trail to create serious oh, injuries much better mm -hmm. and, and kind of not to be snarky one. but he's not 30 oh you know he doesn't have the bones of a 30 year old so fractures are a real possibility for him that's that's absolutely right and to the viewers watching here's the gentleman who who had the spill here and you can see He's not a young guy, right? So um, he kind of gives a recounting of of what you happened. Coherent now, you wanna you remember what happened this time? I saw an easy line down the mat. And I knew you were right on my ass. Remember, I even said, "Hey, yeah. license and registration." Yeah. You rear me. I almost had to get your license and registration, huh? So would you say that it's it's good that he's remembering all of this post crash? I mean, it seems like he remembers everything right up to the time of the crash. I didn't know there was a Yeah, it's definitely a good sign that he's still able to recall um the events leading up to the crash and maybe even while he's falling he remembers the crash. That's a really good sign. But again, this is a a thing where he should be taken to an urgent care, a hospital, something to get evaluated. Um definitely should not be driving home. Um, and then another thing too, 
during this time, like orienting the person, seeing if they know their name, the place, the date. I know those seem like silly questions, but that's really important. Um, and assessing for head trauma. And then always an easy, easy test where you don't have to touch the person. You don't have to move them around. Mm -hmm. Um, just if you can open their eyes and see if they have a pupil reflex. So just seeing if their pupils dilate to light is really an important step in determining if, if there is some sort of head trauma. Yeah. And that is one thing that they did do in the video. They did ask him if he knew his name and, and he did. They asked him, Hey, do you know where we're riding? And he did know, you know, the trail that they were on and the location that they were riding. Um, but it would have mm -hmm. been nice to see them. And again, the video cuts during the crash to them just resuming. Um, we don't know how much time he really waited before getting back on the bike. And, you know, it, it would have been nice to see after five, 10 minutes, some follow up questions with him. Um, to really mm -hmm. just gauge the level of, you know, where he's at mentally before continuing down that ride. It would have been nice to see that additional footage and, and kind of what other precautions they took before continuing that ride. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what we've learned from this crash is if you see somebody take a really hard spill like that, where you're not sure if they have any sort of um, spinal fractures or head trauma, really try to avoid touching them. Um make sure that you're, you moving them isn't going to cause them further harm. And then mm -hmm. also maybe reconsider letting somebody ride back down. Maybe at this yeah. point, it would be a better choice to either walk or find some sort of medical personnel to, to assist, assist your buddy. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. For all the viewers out there, I get these guys are far out. There could be miles of trails left. Um, one guy stay behind, walk it down with him. It is not worth getting back on the bike. And especially if you've ridden this trail before and you know how aggressive the remaining part of the trail is, it's just not worth it after a spill like that where someone's been uncautious for, for several minutes. So um, food for thought. I mean, um, as we do more videos in this series, we're going to talk about, you know, more things that people do on the trails, what to do right, what to do wrong. Um and of course, follow up actions to take. And this isn't going to be, I'm sure, the first time we see someone get knocked out on a, on a crash. So these are going to be reoccurring topics that continue to come out throughout this series that um, hopefully people will start to learn that this is what you should do whenever you come across. You know, if you've seen someone crash, obviously, you know, that's that's one thing. But especially if you come across someone on the trail that has just had a crash and you don't know if they've had a head injury, you know, some of the themes that we're going to talk about is, you know, how to evaluate that and things like that. So um, definitely stay tuned, subscribe, you know, follow the channel. This way you can catch all of those series, kind of learn what to do better, um, you know, so that when you're out there mountain biking, if anything like this would ever happen to you or one of your friends, you know, you're more prepared to to handle that situation. So um, definitely thank you, Dr. Tomlinson, for, for joining us and looking forward to the rest of the videos in the series and, and getting your input on, you know, ways that people can improve their medical knowledge on the trail. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys.